Daredevil season two is finally here. I binged it, I slept for six hours, and now I'm here to review it. But first, to provide some context, my quick thoughts on season one. The first season of Daredevil was a very welcome, gritty, realistic superhero show that expanded the Marvel Cinematic Universe into new territory, street-level vigilantes. Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onforio were great as both Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk and carried the show. However, I do think the season reached its peak with episodes five and six when Wilson Fisk made his first big play and the second half of the season sort of sputtered with the conclusion of the season feeling rushed. You know, they killed off a lot of characters and when you kill off that many characters of value in quick succession, it, it, in my opinion, it's just lazy writing. So I do think the season sort of fizzled out near the end. Nevertheless, it was very entertaining to watch I give it a solid B. Bonus round, the first season of Jessica Jones was great exploring topics such as abuse and rape in a superhero setting. In fact, it wasn't really a superhero show, it was more of a mystery noir set in the world of superheroes. And Kristen Ritter, fantastic as Jessica Jones, David Tennant, incredible as Kilgrave. Jessica Jones season one, I give an A minus. So here's how I'm going to review Daredevil Season 2. First, I'm going to do a spoiler-free section, then I'm going to show a video of predictions I made for the season right before the season launched, and then I'll discuss spoilers for the episodes in uh, groups, and then I'll do a final recap at the end. So let's jump right in with a spoiler-free review of Daredevil Season 2. Season 2 of Daredevil is equally good as the first season, but very different overall, and here's why. The showrunners for the show changed, the executive producers of writing, it changed between seasons, so there is a new feel to the season behind the scenes production-wise, and on screen, Wilson Fisk is no longer a power player, and his loss leaves a vacuum of power that is felt, so the DNA of the show is altered. Wilson Fisk is replaced by the very much anticipated Punisher, played by John Bernthal, and I have got to say, it's phenomenal. John does an incredible job as the Punisher. So good of a job, actually, he overshadows Daredevil for many parts of the season, and as great as Punisher is, when your side character is overshadowing your primary character in the show named Daredevil, I, I just, I, I have to see that as a flaw. Whereas Daredevil in season one, whereas Matt Murdock was a driving force here, the plot is driven forward by the Punisher and by Elektra, who comes in also pretty early in the season. And these two new characters take up the Wilson Fisk spot of driving the plot forward. With the plot split between the two of them, it leaves the narrative very muddled and very confused, and there are some significant pacing problems in the middle of this season. Because the first season had a very single plot line, Stop Wilson Fisk. Here there are three, four concurrent plot threads moving, and it, it just is a bit overwhelming at times. All that said, Daredevil Season 2 is still a pretty good season of television. It's just that by looking to expand outward so much with its universe by adding characters such as Punisher and Elektra, you know, uh, the, the narrative became just too overloaded and it, it dragged the show down at times. For comparison, Jessica Jones Season 1 had Luke Cage, but Luke Cage never overshadowed Jessica Jones, unlike the Punisher here in Daredevil Season 2, which I give, by the way, a solid B matching season one. All right, so now I'm gonna show you quickly the predictions that I filmed before the season started, and then we're gonna talk about the episode spoilers incrementally. It is 2.43, uh, 17 minutes before Daredevil season two is out, and I quickly wanna go over my hopes and expectations for the new season. First of all, the Fisks, Wilson and Vanessa. Wilson in jail, awaiting trial, Vanessa flown away on a helicopter. I hope both of them pop up during the season, probably in the second half. We need to see the Fisk storyline continue since it was such a big part of the show's origin. How dark will the show go with Punisher? Very dark character in the comics, never done right by the movies. I'm really looking forward to John Berthnall's, I think that's the pronunciation, John Berthnall's performance. Uh, look forward to going over that later. The Hand is involved, and from the comic books, Daredevil and the Hand had a mystical element to that plot. I'm very curious to see if mystical elements will be brought into this season and how it will fit with the dark gritty world already established in season one. All right, that's just a couple quick notes in my head. Let's jump right into Daredevil season two. All right, it's about 9.30 in the morning, Friday morning. Let's talk about the first four episodes of Punisher season one. I I'm sorry, Daredevil season two, although it is basically Punisher season one. The Daredevil has taken a back seat. First of all, I'm surprised how quickly the show is playing the Punisher card. Daredevil fought him in the first 
three episodes by episode four they were you know working together that was the kind of progression i was expecting over the course of the whole season not just the first four episodes which makes me wonder if punisher will return after being uh temporarily sidelined or if that's it for him this season i can't take the irish seriously not like the russians i can't believe that we traded the russians for the irish and um the Yakuza for a biker gang. That just seems like a downgrade. And I guess it's the fact that yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, but <laughs> I, I just can't take the Irish seriously on the show. The fight from uh, episode three, it was a great scene. Don't get me wrong, a great sequence, but it was trying too hard to one up the hallway fight from episode two of season one. And it just didn't land you know the editing was really egregious at times and the shot selection seemed poor i just didn't think it was great but the uh, punisher daredevil fight scenes were all pretty good and john like i said john bernthal his acting has been phenomenal he needs to get in three and four his acting he's incredible especially a 10 or so minute monologue he has with the daredevil where Charlie Cox is doing nothing and it's all Bernthal in the scene. John Bernthal dominates these early episodes. My fear going forward is that this is going to be a disjointed season where the upcoming Electra Hand subplot and the Punisher subplot are just two completely separate non-interconnecting stories and that could lead to the season feeling disjointed at times. That's my fear moving ahead, but we will find that out I guess right now. Let's move on to the next batch of episodes. It is 11.45 a.m. Good morning, everyone. Let's talk episodes five and six of Daredevil and enter Elektra. Uh, with the Punisher now in medical rehab, Elektra comes in and takes over. And just like how Frank Castle was the driving force of the first four episodes, Elektra is the driving force now. And Daredevil is once again very secondary when it comes to driving the plot of this season. Matt and Elektra will hook up or whatever. It clearly seems that's what the show is hinting at. I don't really care about the Karen Matt relationship subplot. I just, I'm not invested at all. The show has given me no reason to invest in that romance. Daredevil was barely seen in these two episodes. He had one fight sequence with Elektra at the uh, very start of episode six. And it was a great fight sequence, a bit short, but you know, still a good fight sequence. The action choreography is as good as ever, but very little Daredevil, which meant these episodes were really slow at times with a lot of, you know, just one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with Frank Castle or Electra in a car or in a hospital or wherever. Again, these slow moments that allowed John Bernthal to show his range and uh, a, a very extended scene he had with uh, Karen in his hospital room was, a, was beautiful. And one final note, Matt's Catholicism is nowhere to be seen this this season, and I, I don't take that personally, I'm Jewish for what it's worth, but it's such an integral part of his character and played a huge role in the first season, and it, it, it's part of his core DNA, and yet it's barely been mentioned this season, and I'm wondering why. Why is the uh, Catholicism being toned down? I would have really loved for the show to continue to explore Matt's faith and uh, just disappointed it's not. But still, you know, okay, two, two slower episodes, uh, pacing slowed down a bit, not a lot of action. For some reason, we just got a bunch of, you know, vigilante espionage, and it was a new, unique turn, but I wanna see the show get back to its action focus. Let's move on to the next episodes after I take care of my car issues. It's 6 p.m., let's go over Daredevil Season 2, Episodes 7 and 8, and there's a lot to go over. Um, first of all, not much to talk about with Seven. Elektra is awesome. Um, the main three, you know, Murdoch, Page, Nelson, all falling apart, uh, which is, you know, now making the previously boring uh, Karen... Uh, Matt romantic subplots now finally getting interesting since their group is falling apart. Episode 8 was phenomenal. Stick returns. Stick had a one episode guest appearance last season. He's back now and he brings the exposition. Now the hand is fully in play. The Yakuza's digging a hole the size of a half a football field and the narrative is finally moving forward because so far there has not been a presence like Wilson Fisk in the first season to drive the narrative forward since neither Frank Castle nor Elektra have really been villains. Finally, uh, with the beginning fight great, a assassination attempt great, action is great all around. Stick, Scott Glenn back as Stick, he brings an immediate presence that 
immediately within the first five minutes elevated the episode probably above everything else so far the season and finally let's talk about the end Wilson Fisk is back right as the Punisher was taken to jail the second I saw him in that white uniform similar to the one Wilson Fisk was wearing when he was arrested last season I thought come on I, I recognize that white style prison uniform let's get to Fisk let's get to Fisk we go outside he's in the back he's working out it's Wilson Fisk and now I'm finally fully invested in where the season is going. It took eight episodes, but I'm now eagerly awaiting the remaining, what I think, five episode conclusion. So let's jump right to that. It's about 9.30 p.m. on Friday night. Just finished episodes 9 and 10 of Daredevil Season 2. Let's jump right in. Wilson Fisk is back. I was hoping so much. And here he is, once again, a major power player in Season 2. No sign of Vanessa Fisk yet, but I remain hopeful she will return this season. Fisk's uh, rise to control of his prison. Great to watch how he used Punisher to his advantage. It's, it's great to have uh, Wilson Fisk back, who was an antagonistic... Uh, factor last season and drove the plot forward like I said earlier Fisk is in the DNA of the show and now that he's back it really is propulsing the plot forward um, also back is Nobu back from the dead I mean stick did mention you know immortality earlier and now we've seen it Nobu was not I was not expecting Nobu to be back let's see how that plays out Karen and the newspaper guy great to see Karen showing incentive great to see that newspaper guy not being a total dick uh, Claire Temple is back. I always love more Rosario Dawson. I do want to talk about the season as a whole briefly. The narrative has been muddled. At times we're following uh, Foggy and Karen. At times we're following Electra. At times we're following Punisher or just Matt. And they're all doing their own things. And it's great to, you know, have a diversified ensemble. But the narrative has been muddled. There has not been a consistent through line like the Wilson Fisk storyline last year to keep everything, you know, glued together. Stick has an agenda he wanted, uh, Electra dead, that was a great surprise to me. And it looks like the Hand are about to siege the uh, Claire's hospital, which is foggy now. It looks like, again, all these pieces converging, and it looks like the war that Stick mentioned is truly, truly starting. And we'll take a look at that in the final batch of Season 2, the final three episodes. It's 9.30 a.m. on Saturday. I finished the season, and one of my complaints with the first season was that it didn't finish strong. It sort of petered out near the end. This year just started killing every character that was, I guess, not uh, the main trio or Fisk. Um, and it just seemed, you know, not completely planned out. This season, the end game was clearly thought out. The problem is, since the narrative was so, was so muddled all season long, the hand and Nobu being the end game, just, it, it didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the season. Not that I am complaining, because it was very good. The action sequences in these last three episodes were great. Um, it was amazing to see the hand, you know, fully at play, the relationship with Elektra and Stick and Matt finally coming to a head, and um, it, I'm not complaining about that, but Nobu is the big bad of the season, the guy we saw burned to death, I mean, I get that he's back, but one, you didn't tell us exactly how he's back, we, I mean, I know, immortality, but you didn't give us any specifics, the hole that you're building under, that you're digging underground, there's still no specifics, there's a lot of uh, questions left unanswered as the season ends and now with uh, the entire Karen, Matt, Foggy relationship being completely split up. And by the way, great cameo by Hogarth. That caught me completely off guard. I'm really happy to see, you know, the continuing in uh, universe intertwine. I also really love the cameo from Madame Gao. Like I said at the beginning, I was hoping she'd play a bigger role this season, but I'm glad just to know that she's still there alive and kicking it in Hell's Kitchen. Electra's death did catch me off guard. I was very sure the show was uh, planning on building her into the overall Defenders universe. Anyways, the season ends with uh, Matt revealing to Karen that he's Daredevil and Karen just having a blank look on her face. Just really didn't engage me. And a lot of open endings, of course, regarding the hand. It looks like the hand is still moving forward with whatever their plan is for uh, Hell's Kitchen. So this arc isn't over, it's just I guess, sort of kicking off. So those are just some of my thoughts on the final three episodes. I'm gonna be right back with a total look at the season. Daredevil season two is the Iron Man two of Netflix's Marvel shows. Now, Iron Man two aggressively tried to expand the Marvel Cinematic Universe by adding so many side characters that Tony Stark 
was losing uh, screen time to, to Black Widow, to Nick Fury, to um, the overall plot of setting up the Avengers franchise. And it's similar here, although the Defender series is not, you know, heavily pushed, the addition of Punisher and Elektra and uh, more time given to all the side characters doesn't make this feel like a daredevil show daredevil is surely in it but half the show he's not the driving force he's not even the most interesting character on scene most of the time that's punisher and uh it, it does hurt the show a bit i mentioned at the start pacing problems and yes there are pacing problems the legal arc in the middle took way too long for something that was just going to end with Punisher back out on the streets. I did enjoy, you know, Wilson Fisk finally coming into play. I would have liked to see more of him. I understand why they held back. Uh, I was hoping to see, you know, Vanessa once or maybe more of Gal, but it's nice to at least have them mentioned so we know, or we saw Gal just to know, you know, these people will be back later. Uh, the hand in the second half of the season, I just wish they spent more time setting it up in the first half so it didn't seem like it came as out of nowhere as it did. I, I mean, yes, we got the hints. We got hints in the first season and bits of the second season early on, but with all the focus on Punisher, out of nowhere comes the hand, and yes, they used Elektra to bridge it over, but it was just a very, very incoherent narrative at times, and I cannot overlook it. I also missed the gothic look that the show had in the first season. Now, while the cinematography is a bit better and you can see things better, the lighting is improved, uh, the production design is is still very very good. It does it just does not does not look as visually distinct as it did previously. And again, you have to remember Stephen DeKnight, the showrunner for the first season, worked on I believe Spartacus for Showtime, so he had that you know gritty gothic look down. And the new showrunners just I guess decided to ditch that look altogether, which I think is a shame because it made Daredevil season one a very unique looking show. Something I cannot say about the second season. And overall, at times, it just did seem like the second season was trying to trump the first season, uh, particularly with the sequel to the hallway fight in episode, I believe, three or four this year, which, as I previously mentioned, I just did not think was as good. I also haven't really talked at all, I think, about Elodie Young as Electra. She did a very fine job. I would say she was good to great at times. Her character did seem uh, ambiguous, ambiguously written intentionally, and her role with the hand arc in the final uh, three episodes, uh, it did seem, you know, a bit forced, having her want to kill Stick and then having her be tied to the destiny of the hand. It, it did seem a little bit forced. And speaking of the hand, there were very few answers on Nobu's return, what they're doing with the hole in Manhattan. Um, and I was hoping, you know, we would get answers to these questions, but we didn't. They're pushing the uh, can to the next season, which we don't even know when there will be a season three. I'm assuming it'll be after the Defenders miniseries, uh, but yeah, we'll see. So anyways, Daredevil Season 2 gets a solid B. I still recommend it, flaws and all. It is a very entertaining uh, season of television. Go check it out right now on Netflix.com. That's all I've got. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, let's have a conversation in the comments below. Tell me what you think of the season. And stay tuned for more here on TV Junkie.